Good morning. Uh, I'm Alice Pleb from the University of Catania, Italy. I have the pleasure here to present a research application uh, we developed in Blender with Giorgio Grasso from the University of Messina. Uh, we use Blender to simulate the interaction of fire inside an uh, industrial plant. Let me first spell out the motivation of this kind of research. Uh, fire is the most dangerous hazard in uh, most uh, industries, especially petrol and petrochemical refineries. Uh, just a few years ago, uh, a fire killed 15 workers inside the third largest oil refinery in the United States. It is especially alarming, the data of no progress in the uh, preservation of worker life in the most recent years. Moreover, the dominating source of fire causing damages in people and properties come from within the structure of the refinery instead of outside sources. Uh, strategies should accept that a fire may always develop uh, despite all possible strategies. Uh, so it is of paramount importance to be able to predict the possible scenarios created by a fire. So computer simulation can greatly help in many ways uh, by um, risk assessment, and evaluation and even training of operators. Um, the computer simulation um, developed around the 90s from the uh, domain of uh, computational fluid dynamics, which in practice are um, a collection of two solutions to the Navier-Stokes equation, which is the standard mathematical representation of uh, fluid dynamics. Uh, regarding the commercial tools, oh, sorry. Regarding the commercial tools, uh, um, most of them are owned by insurance companies. Uh, for the public domain, the most used open source softwares are OpenFORM and FDS. Uh, OpenFORM is a generic tool for uh, um, solving just fluid problems, while FDS is more tailored to fire simulation. Anyway, all of these uh, CFD tools uh, for fire simulations uh, are lacking from the fundamental feature of uh, being able to handle uh, very large and complex 3D structures. So our work has been carried out with the Safe Mode project, Safety Modeling for High Risk Industrial Application, which is a project founded by the European community. The goal of this project is to produce a tool uh, for uh, hazard analysis uh, regarding a fire developing inside a refinery structure. And uh, we decide this uh, goal can be fully accomplished just using Blender. First of all, Blender offers the fundamental possibility of uh, handling uh, very complex and larger 3D models. Uh, single, secondly, uh, Blender includes smooth particle hydrodynamics, which is a Lagrangian solution to the Navier-Stokes equation. And we use it for simulating uh, the behavior of a real-life fire inside the refinery. And then in Blender, it's possible to include an atmospheric representation, especially uh, indicating the wind affecting a possible open space uh, refinery. What we added in Blender is the computation of heat transferred from the flame to the surrounding refinery. And then we integrated Blender with a decision support system for safety analysis. Uh, the simulation consists in an animation, inside Blender, of the interaction of the fire with surrounding objects. For each frame of the animation, uh, this algorithm is executed. It is composed by three main parts. Flame simulation, how we uh, represent a real-life fire behavior inside Blender. Radiative transfer, uh, the computation of real physical values of heat to be monitored by the simulator. Radiative transfer is computed by means of uh, minimum separation distance, which is the computation of uh, the distance between two um, 3D standard objects in the scene. Uh, at first, flame simulation. Uh, the flame inside Blender is represented use, uh, using a particle system. Um, initialized with the emission parameters depending on the type and size of the leakage, 
causing the fire to be simulated. For the purpose of computing the separation distance between the flame and the surrounding objects, we wrapped the particle system inside a bounding volume, which is dynamically recomputed at each frame of the simulation. For simplicity, we choose an axis-aligned minimum bounding boxes. Moreover, this bounding volume is extended in the upper direction. This is a solution to the problem of taking account of the advective component of heat transfer. As you can see, heat is uh, trans uh, transferred in four different components. Conduction and diffusion can be omitted for the purpose of our simulation. Advection can be uh, treated as this bounding, uh, bounding volume extension. The dominating component is, in fact, radiation, and it is computed in the second part of the algorithm. Radiative transfer is fundamental because its value can be directly related to damage and risk levels of objects and people in the refinery. Uh, in the formula, you see for a given source of radiation F, which represents the fire, the amount of energy affecting an object A is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the object and the flame. Moreover, it is directly related to the number of particles representing the flame inside Blender, weighted by a factor, lambda, uh, depending on the type of fuel uh, in, the com in the simulation. Because of the significant way of the distance, uh, its computation is critical, and there is a critical trade-off between the precision and the speed of this computation. So, mm, much attention must be given to the third part of the algorithm. This has been, by large, the most demanding development of the algorithm. Of course, already, Blender already includes a collision detection system, but it does implement a specific computation of separation distance between two non-intersecting objects. So our algorithm has been tailored to this specific case, uh, obtaining the best possible solutions in terms of computational optimality. The computation is uh, solved in a chain of three phases. The first one, the broad phase, is uh, uh, quick and dirty screening of which objects are roughly close enough to the flame to, defer, to deserve further analysis. As we saw for the particle system, each object in the refinery is wrapped inside a bounding volume. Uh, distance between this kind of bounding volume are easily estimated using the Manhattan distance. Uh, for all objects selected in the broad face, the actual computation of separation distance is done in the narrow phase. Um, the computation of minimal, uh, minimal separation distance is based on two concepts, first introduced by Lin and Kenny. 3D Voronoi regions used in, using in the computation of closest feature pair uh, of two objects. Uh, very quickly, in the picture, you see a standard 2D Voronoi diagram, which is a partitioning of a plane, depending on points of the plane. A 3D Voronoi diagram, instead, is a partitioning of space, depending on feature of a, a 3D object. This is a visual example of 3D, 3D Voronoi region, distinguishing three types of features, an edge, face, and vertex. The blue planes, called Voronoi planes, Delimit the Voronoi region inside, um, delimit the Voronoi region created by that feature. And each Voronoi plane delimits two adjacent Voronoi regions created by two adjacent features. Uh, Voronoi regions are used in the uh, computation of the closest feature pair, which is the couple of features uh, whose distance is minimum, and this distance coincides with the minimum separation distance between two objects. The following formula is the core theorem of the algorithm. Um, let me explain it. Uh, A and B are two objects, FA and FB two of their features. Uh, R represents uh, the set of points inside the Voronoi region created by that feature, and D is the minimum separation distance between two elements. 
this uh, theorem states that if, Boron uh, if both features mutually fall inside the Voronoi regions created by the other feature, then the minimum separation distance between the two features is exactly the minimum distance between the two objects. Let me <laughs> clarify this concept with a visual example. Uh, for example, we want to prove uh, this couple of features is the closest couple of features. Um, so we want to verify the condition we saw in the formula. At first, we want to check if the Voronoi region created by the vertex includes the face. This is true. Then we want to check if the Voronoi region of the face includes the vertex. This is false. So that means there is another region of A, which, another feature sorry, of A, which is closer to the vertex. So we want to choose a new feature of A. Um, this is a critical uh, step we shall better discuss it later. Suppose we have choose this edge. Now we want to repeat the previous process. Check if the Voronoi region of the vertex includes the edge. True. Check if the Voronoi region of the edge includes the vertex. This is also true. So uh, we have proven this is the closest feature pair between the two polyhedron. And moreover, at the same time, we have found the minimum separation distance between these two 3D objects. Uh, let's go back to the critical step number five. When a condition has failed and a feature must be replaced, um, the new feature is chosen just from the immediate neighborhood of the previous one. This strategy assures that the algorithm is computationally optimal. Let me explain it. Uh, it is legit to assume there is a special coherence between the two adjacent frames of, uh, of an animation representing real-life events. In other words, an, an object is expected to move in continuous and smooth movements. So, uh, the closest feature pair will gradually change in a small neighborhood of the previous one. So, uh, given the CFP of the previous frame, the number of calculations to compute the CFPS of the next frame is nearly constant, and moreover, it doesn't, no, it doesn't depend on the number of vertices in the scene. We experimented the algorithm on a real oil refinery, the Milazzo oil refinery, uh, which is located in southern Italy, and it is one of the largest oil and gas refineries in Europe. This refinery, too, has experienced uh, fire events. The last one just a couple of years ago. And this is one of the reasons for us to choose this refinery as a prototype testing. A preliminary phase has been in the acquisition of a 3D model of a section of the refinery. Uh, this, has, this has been uh, using a 3D laser scanner. On the left, there is a a picture of a real, of real portion of the refinery, and on the left, the same imported in Blender. And this is a quick overview of the overall model of this section of the refinery. And the exchange format between the laser scanner and the and Blender is OBJ format. This is a quick tour inside the model of the refinery at ground level. Sorry for the flashing. Uh, this is a very detailed model. It has more than 2.7 million polygons. At the end of this quick tour, you will see an area highlighted in red. This area has taken as uh, area testing uh, because of its uh, critical level of risk uh, of fire. Uh, as I saw previously, uh, Blender is integrated inside a uh, decision support system. Uh, the communication between the two elements starts when uh, the safe mode DSS uh, set up a simulation scenario. This scenario is uh, directly communicated to the Blender engine, which then starts the simulation. 
at the end of the simulation, the results are produced and sent back to the uh, decision support system for uh, more analysis. The main part of the communication between the DSS and, uh, and Blender is the translation of parameters. Uh, the DSS has its own representation of the refinery, made by um, settings which um, include the physical parameters of assets of the refinery and both of the flame type to be simulated. So many of these uh, information are translated into um, Blender settings, uh, including the particle system and the actual emitter of the flame. Let me show a few results of this simulation. Uh, because the algorithm for minimal separation distance requires only convex objects, it is necessary to, uh, for all relevant assets of the refinery uh, to be split into subcomponents to be wrapped inside the axis aligned bounding boxes. This is a, a quick render of a real simulation. As you can see, in the beginning, all assets are at, at rest. When the flames start to develop, the, asset, the closed asset on the left start to get warmer. Um, you have to consider the purpose of the simulation is not visualization. Uh, the render is optional. Uh, but a quick, uh, quick effort is given just by coloring the assets. When a wind starts blowing from the left, the flame is pushed to the right, warming up more assets. You can see at each frame of the animation the bounding volume dynamically recomputed. Uh, more red the asset is uh, means uh, more heat is transferred. Okay, when the flame uh, burns out, uh, all assets turn back to blue, so at rest. Uh, the important result of the simulation is the numerical data okay, that can be plotted in time. Each curve uh, refers to a specific asset of the refinery and represents uh, the evolution of uh, heat power passing through that asset through time. Let me conclude with a possible or future implementation. One ongoing activity is the calibration of parameters using Blender. Uh, we can use a CFD tool to simulate a specific class of fuel and then check back in Blender which settings uh, reproduce a flame with the same characteristics. Then we will experiment more sophisticated bounding volume type, both for the flame and for the broad face. Uh, instead of AABB, we will use a K discrete oriented polytop, which uses K different orientation of planes. Uh, at final, we will experiment an automatization of the uh, composition of complex assets into uh, more simple convex uh, subcomponents. Thank you very much for your attention.